Let us turn our attention to the court system now, beginning with the civil court system. So we just finished discussing how there are civil laws and criminal laws in England and Wales. And now we're going to talk about the different court systems that enforce those uh, different types of law. So if we start off with the county court, so we're going to work our way at the uh, from the bottom to the top. So the county court is where most civil cases will start out. And if you have ever watched any of those those TV adverts where they say to you, uh, do you have any CCJs against your name? And they're trying to get you a credit card or a loan or something like that. And say, don't worry if you have any CCJs, we can still sort you out. Well, a CCJ is a county court judgment. So basically, if you haven't been paying your bills uh, and you get sued, uh, as we discussed previously, um, by the person you owe the money, you'll go to the county court. And then if you've had a CCJ, that's a county court judgment saying you, you have to pay your bill. Other option would be the magistrate's court, um, but this is not uh, as common. So you can see that it says family proceedings only. So most uh, cases, it'll be the county court you start off with. But uh, just for full awareness, it can also come into the magistrate's court. From there, we're into the high court. So we've got the Queen's Bench Division, the Chancery and the Family Division. So the high court is um, one of the uh, sort of uh, the highest level of courts. Um, <clears throat> and so it's broken into different parts. So we've got the Queen's Bench. Um, so this part uh, of the high court can actually deal with both civil and criminal cases we have the chancery so we'll talk a little bit about the chancery because that covers uh contract law company law and then we've got the family division so if you did go to the magistrates and you weren't happy with the result and you wanted to appeal you could appeal to the high court to the family division from there on to the court of appeal so there's uh one court of appeal and you can see there's got a civil division and a criminal division and so from there we're then on to the supreme court which was previously the house of lords so you, just in case you see anything referring to the house of lords as the highest court in the land before um that's uh we've had the supreme court in england and Wales since about 2009 it was introduced uh you, you probably heard the term supreme court before but that was more uh in america they, they've had a supreme court for a long time uh, but um, as we go through the course, we're going to learn that the House of Lords is actually involved with setting the laws. So it's decided that um, having the House of Lords setting the law and also deciding how the law applies could be a bit of a conflict of interest. So the Supreme Court was set up uh, not too long ago. Then we have this uh, leapfrog procedure. So generally, if you're not happy with the lower court's decision, you would appeal to the next court up. So magistrate's court, you'd appeal to the high court family division, high court, you'd appeal to court of appeal, court of appeal, you'd go to Supreme Court. Then if you're not happy with their decision, well, that's it. That's the highest court in the land. Um, so we do have this leapfrog procedure where you can actually jump from the high court straight to the Supreme Court. This would generally happen where a case is in the public interest and also time is a factor. So uh, for example, uh, there was a, a sad case of Charlie Gard, who was um, uh, a child, and he was. Um, the NHS had said that uh, he, they didn't think he would survive, but there was a potential treatment for him in America, and the parents wanted to take him to America so he could get this treatment, but the NHS didn't agree necessarily that it would work, and so they said it would just extend his pain and suffering. It would be better if he stayed in the hospital, and they were giving him palliative care, which is where you take care of someone before they, they pass on. And uh, that was a, obviously in the public interest, that case, because the decision of that case, the precedent that would be set would be who is in charge of a child's care. Is it the parents can pretty much do what they want or is it the NHS has the final say over what happens with that child? So that was in the public interest. And the, um, unfortunately, Charlie was dying at the time. So time was of the essence. And so that went straight to the Supreme Court uh, in that case. So civil law procedures, um, we've got some, uh, just to be aware of some of how it works. Uh, so you know, who knows, we might help our clients uh, sue one of their customers to get paid, or we may end up uh, having to sue some of our clients to get paid if we ever set up our own accountancy firm. So it's just handy to know, uh, obviously good to know for the exam as well. So you've got small claims, so anything less than 10,000 pounds or a simple case. And 
that goes to the county court. You've got your fast track. So this is claims of £25,000. Uh, you get one day allocated in court and you don't need any experts. So this is for slightly bigger claims. And again, that would happen in the county court. And then you've got your multi-track. So this is bigger claims, over 25,000 uh, so or, or complex cases, and that would go to the high court. So basically, um, the courts are really busy. There's lots of things going on. And so they'll decide how to allocate your case. So if it was just a small case where I was suing a customer because they hadn't paid an invoice, I go to the, the small claims track and I go to the county court and it would be a very quick decision um, and no formality involved. I don't even need to have a lawyer or anything like that. I would bring a copy of the invoice, maybe proof of delivery, that sort of thing. And um, the customer, if they turned up, sometimes they don't turn up, uh, they would turn up with any evidence they have about why they're not paying. Maybe they think that uh, I didn't deliver the accounts on time or something like that. Uh, fast track, so you get a whole day allocated. You will be told um, what kinds of documentation you need to have. So the idea is that you gather everything you need before you go to court and that way there's, there's no messing about in the court. It's boom, we've got everything we need here and we're gonna make a decision today. Multi-track, so this is where the judge will kind of decide, you know, how to run the case. Uh, and again, there'll be there will be deadlines and you know documentation you have to provide, but uh, it will vary depending on on what the case is. So um, that's the idea of this to try and make the courts a bit more efficient by putting cases onto tracks depending on the amount and the complexity of the case. So as I said, the overriding objective requires the case to be decided justly and proportionally to the money and complexity involved. So the overriding thing is that you get a just decision, not necessarily, you know, the, the courts always do it in the cheapest possible way. So even if you if, if you put onto the, a track, it doesn't mean they're going to try and rush you through. They want to come to a just decision.